Hello, welcome back to another episode of Audit Trails. Today we're going to be discussing NIST 853 Control AU5. So what's AU5 all about? So AU5 really focuses on the response to audit processing failures. So like all of my other videos, we're going to kind of jump into the control description, dissect that a little bit. What does it really mean? What criteria are we really calling out? And then we're going to jump into what we're looking for if we're going to do an audit against this control and what kind of evidence would satisfy this control. That being said, we'll wrap up the video with any enhancements that are attached to this control and kind of what um, impact baseline that those uh, enhancements are required at. So first and foremost, um, audit Audit Control 5, so AU5, response to audit processing failures. The control description reads, the information system alerts organization-defined personnel or roles in the event of an audit processing failure and takes the following additional actions, which these actions are also defined by the organization, and they could be in the form of um, shutting down the information system, overwriting all this audit records, uh, stop generating your audit logs altogether, any of the any of the above um, or in addition to anything that your organization may already be doing so one thing that I think is important to call out on this control is what is an audit processing failure it could be a plethora of things so it could be a software error and hardware error um, just failure to capture any logs within a specific application or maybe underlying infrastructure or if you have any storage capacity issues so um, you're logging too much and you don't have the appropriate amount of storage to be able to retain an appropriate amount of data and I do want to be kind of weary when I say appropriate amount of data because it obviously can vary from organization to organization so um, Given your specific use case and kind of what the system may be, those requirements may be different across the board. So let's jump into what we're looking for. So what we really want to see right off the bat is some AU procedures that are going to outline those specific uh, personnel or roles that are alerted in the event of an audit processing failure. So whether that be a distribution list or if there's a tool that does it where each individual is getting emails based on a given role within that tool, um, we just want to make sure that those roles and responsibilities are maintained within your AU procedures and updated regularly. So if someone leaves the organization or if there has been a change in roles and responsibilities within an organization, anything like that should be noted. Um, as far as evidence of that, we would want to see some screenshot evidence of that. So whether it be a screenshot of a specific email or, or proof that a correspondence has been sent and that the actions that were taken kind of align with the procedures written in the AU procedures. So the second part of this is defined actions that are taken within the in the event of an audit processing failure. So whether that action is an information system shutdown, overwriting your oldest audit records just to kind of maintain uh, those audit capture, the audit capturing, if you will, or you just stop generating audit records altogether based on the specific scenario. And then same thing applies for this. We're going to want to see evidence of that. So screenshots that your servers are configured to do exactly what your procedures outline so whether that like i said whether that's a shutdown whether that is an overwriting of audit logs anything like that we would want to see some screenshot evidence of that um could be actual it could be screenshots of it actually taking place it could be screenshots of the configuration settings just proving that if there was that failure or audit processing failure that those would be the actions that take that take place so the next part of this is going to be enhancements. So I do want to call out that any of these enhancements are not currently required at the 853 revision 4 moderate impact uh, baseline, but some of them are required at a high moderate or a high impact level. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So AU5 enhancement 1 really talks about uh, the information system providing a warning to organizational defined personnel within a specific defined time period, that time period is also defined by your organization, um, when your record storage volume has been reached or the repository maximum audit record storage capacity has been reached a, a specific percentage. So if you want to define a threshold internally um, and then 
same thing. We're just going to be looking for evidence that that happened. So if you're approaching that threshold or if, if you have reached that threshold, let's see a screenshot of that warning that was sent um, and kind of it should align with your AU procedures and who those defined personnel and, and roles were. Let's look at the next enhancement here. So AU52, the information system provides an alert to organizational defined personnel or roles when an audit failure event has occurred. So same thing, there's a lot of organizational defined variables within these um, enhancements. So it's going to be those defined roles. It's going to be a given time period. That's important. So you, if an audit failure happens, what is the organization defined time period that should align with best practices? I think that's important to call out that you guys abide by. And do you have screenshot evidence to prove it? So if your procedures call out, we notify people within four hours of an audit failure, that any notification and corresponding evidence should be within that given threshold. So that's something that when we're doing an audit, we want to look for. Enhancement three is the information system enforces configurable network communication traffic volume thresholds reflecting limits on audit capacity and rejects or delay network traffic above those thresholds. So um, organizations could have the capacity to reject or delay the processing of network communication traffic if auditing such traffic is determined to exceed the storage capacity of the information system audit function. So this is a response, this response is triggered by establishing organizational traffic volume thresholds. So that that's important. Um, this this isn't really required by a lot of organizations. This is like more of a maturity model thing here, but um, it is an enhancement to AU5. The last enhancement is enhancement four. So um, that reads the information system invokes whether it's a full system shutdown, partial shutdown, or a degraded operational mode in the event that um, there is an audit processing failure. So couple things you have to define here. What's your audit, what's your organizational defined audit failure? And then what is your action going to be, whether that's a full system shutdown or anything like that. Same thing, this is a maturity model thing. Um, and you have, really have to lay out kind of the roles and, and kind of the organizational defined quote unquote failure that would result in such an action like this. So um, a lot of organizations aren't, aren't at liberty to just shut systems down due to audit logging issues and stuff like that. So this is a maturity thing. You want to make sure that you have failovers in place, of course. You want to make sure that you have appropriate logging in place, but you also have to have a plan for any failures. So that being said, thank you for tuning into another episode of Audit Trails, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.